Meditation is an extremely powerful tool if you know how to do it. A lot of my episodes, I talk about why we meditate, and I give you a few tools on how to actually carry through with the meditation, but today we're going to go a little bit deeper in what you do before you meditate to make it that much more powerful. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Let's take a moment in this moment to just call our energy back, breathing in deeply together through the nose, holding it at the top just for a second. And then releasing, just release the stress, release the worries, release the problems. Calling back our energy is closing all of the mental tabs that you have open of all the problems, the to-dos, the worries. Mentally picture those tabs open and mentally picture yourself clicking the X on every one of those tabs As all those tabs are open, you have energy strands coming from your body going out to those tabs. And I want you to call all your energy back right now in this moment, bringing back that energy right into your heart space. Feel your body filling back up with your attention and your presence. You can even put your hand on your heart, feeling the energy, breathing in deeply feeling the support underneath you, giving yourself a present, a gift of your attention in this moment. Breathe in, feel your feet on the floor, hold your breath at the top and breathe out and feeling your body sinking just a little bit deeper into the support underneath you. Hey guys, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you having very powerful meditations. If you're not having powerful meditations, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Everyone around me is beginning a meditation practice. Everyone around me also has done it once and said it didn't work. Now, today I wanna talk about the powerful things you can do before you begin the meditation practice. So then the meditation actually is plugged in, charged up, and ready to deliver what it is you actually want. Now, there's a few steps, and I'm going to call this a meditation ritual, but it is all the stuff that happens before you meditate. A lot of my a lot of my episodes I talk about, you know, when you get into that meditation and you quiet your mind, and then you get to kind of, you know, sit in that visualization. So I have lots of episodes about that, but today we're going to talk about the, the, the precursor, the prerequisite, if you will, to your daily meditation. Um, so... First of all, if you haven't done it already, is getting a journal, getting some sort of a notebook to take some really powerful notes. Like I listened to lots of different teachers throughout, uh, you know, the last several years and I YouTube and I read their books and I take their courses and sometimes I see them even live and in person. But I feel like it's really important to jot down the few key points that you get from whatever it is you're learning. So if you're listening to this in the car, is maybe making mental note, hit pause, even if you have to record it, even if at a stop sign or you have a little notebook next to you, it's just making a note about the things that mean something to you. Like I've been reading a ton of books. Uh, I read a ton of books anyways, but I've already read through probably three or four books so far this year, and it's February 5th. And I don't always get a bunch from a book, um, but when I do get something that makes a perspective shift happen for me, I make note of that. And I want to do, that's why I say in my podcast where I say, you know, let's go get that nugget is you might only get one little thing from a a podcast episode that has a list of seven steps. That's important. You don't have to implement all of the steps that I give you. You do what works for you. 
my meditations are very different from other people's or teacher teachings that they teach how meditation goes. Mine is very different. You know, I'm very visual. So I put a lot of visualization into my podcast. And today I was um, watching a Joe Dispenza video, listening to it really on YouTube and got this, this ritual that that we can do before we do a meditation. And so I'm going to combine some of what he says to how I do my rituals before I meditate. I don't just sit down and close my eyes. Now, if I'm doing a grounding, I'm trying to just ground and, and I'm feeling a little anxious or feeling a little overwhelmed, then I will sit down, but I still have an intention. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now, the last I believe it's the last two episodes where I am talking a lot about the the avatar creation. Who am I going to be? What am I doing? What kind of person am I? Um, how do I think? How do I walk? When you're starting to step into something that you want to change. And yeah, the last two, last three even, how to strategically achieve your desire, how to get anything you want, how to transform your life, how to easily create change. It's really the last four episodes. And it really is about when you recognize that when you want something outside of you to change, that you must change the inside of you. I say that a lot in a lot of the episodes, and it's not to be redundant. It really is to open your mind to the change as possible for you, no matter what you want, no matter what it is you're trying to attract. And it's just like when I say the reflection in the mirror is not the real you. That is just a reflection of who you are in the physical world. So if you want that reflection to change, you have to change. And it's it's such a great analogy to use because it's so important for us to understand that there is no out there. It is just you being reflected out there. And that is the illusion, right? It's the true you that's on the inside. So there's always desires and, and change that we want to make. But until you really understand, when you stand back and go, okay, I want this thing, whatever the thing is, is for me to stand back and go, who do I have to become to get that thing? Not as a manipulative thing, not as a manipulative, I got to change my character for a little while to, to force make this thing come to me, but it is in the becoming that the desire can show up. And it's such a powerful, that was such a powerful shift for me because then anything outside of me, I can reflect that, I can bring that reflection back to me and go, okay, so where in my life am I feeling that? If I'm annoyed by something, where in my life am I annoyed? What does annoying give me? Why am I annoyed by that thing? And I get to go a little bit deeper to find the emotional connection to that reflection that's, that's being revealed to me. So today, when we talk about meditation, it is really about your intention, is having a very clear intention about what it is you're trying to create. Now, I also want to talk about how we view practice, practicing the meditation, what does that actually mean? And I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about rehearsal, like stepping fully into and embracing the who we are and who we are becoming, because it is in the becoming that we get the desire. Okay, so starting first, when you want something to change, we spend a lot of time, <laughs> and it's so, re it's so ridiculous, and it's ridiculous even when I do it. We spend so much of our time involved in the physical, this physical world, the people that are showing up in our life, that it's ridiculous how long we spend trying to get them to change so that we feel better. And when you have that perspective shift that there is no out there and those people are just reflecting back to you, then <laughs> you begin going, oh crap, <laughs> now I have to do something. And it becomes this new work. Well, what I'm trying to teach in all of my 450 episodes is that there is no out there. Everything is energy. And when you begin the journey inward and you begin to transform yourself, your outside, the outside physical experience begins to change. That's what we're talking about today. So the pre-meditation ritual, this is the stuff that you're going to do before you meditate. Now, I don't know if you watch like... Um, movies like time travel movies or, you know, the Avengers and there's certain portals that open at certain times. Well, I believe that the subconscious mind is easier accessible two times during the day. One is when you first start waking up. 
that you're going from, remember the brain waves, you're going from delta to theta to alpha to beta. Beta is when you're fully awake and in your, in your conscious mind. And when you go to sleep is the second time. And that is when we go from beta to alpha to theta to delta. So when you're in, you're getting in those relaxed states naturally. Why not take advantage of those times? Now, can you meditate at the you know high noon in the middle of and your lunch break in your car? Yes, of course you can. It might be a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. It takes some practice, and we're going to talk about practice today. So first things first, the first thing you're going to do in your pre-meditation ritual, and this is where your journal will come in, is what am I doing this meditation for? What do I want? Who am I becoming? What am I trying to attract? What is the desire? What is my intention? And getting as clear as possible on what it is that you're going to sit down and do this meditation for. There have been times where I've sat down to do a meditation and I'm like, I really don't need anything or want anything. Like I'm, I'm not really trying to change anything at this moment. That can be okay. Then it's just about practice. Then it's about practicing your meditation. And it's about practicing clearing your mind. It's about practicing overcoming the body and sitting still and allowing the body to just relax and not want to get up and engage with the 3D world. You're going to have your coffee in a minute. You're going to take a shower in a second. You're going to eat breakfast in just a little bit. But right now, I want you, body. I want you to sit down. This is where the mind gets to, gets to basically control the body. And that takes practice for a lot of people, especially if you are someone like me, if you're someone who really engages with the 3D world, and I do. So it takes time for me and has in the past to sit down, sit down, sit down for longer periods of time to practice the sitting down process and don't fall asleep. Like that all takes some practice. So it's important right now, like if you're really taking this this episode into a transformative state where I really want to transform my life and I'm listening to what Jen is telling me, then take some notes on this, is what is difficult for you during meditation? Do you have a hard time focusing your mind? Do you have a hard time sitting still? Do you fall asleep during meditation? Do you, do you claim you don't have time for meditation? These are all obstacles to overcome. And that is where the practice comes in. So first is, why am I doing this meditation? What is the clear intention? I want to heal. I want to create. I want to be more patient with my kids. I want to make more money. I want a different career. What is it that you're asking for? After that, it really is about getting into the specifics of the desire. So what do you want to change? Now, this is about you changing, but it creates the scene. What is it outside of you you want to change? And let's say you have, let's say this is about you and your spouse, okay? And maybe you guys aren't getting along very well, or, you know, you've been acting a certain way with them and you're, you know, wanting to change that. You want to improve your relationship. So, why am I doing this meditation? It's because I want to improve my relationship. Why do I want, what do I want to change? I want to feel better. I want to feel less anxious or less angry or less annoyed. Okay. Then what thoughts, beliefs, and or actions do you want to change? So when they come home and they say this certain thing or they do this certain thing, I want to respond differently. And you've heard me say before is when we change, our people in our 3D world begin to change. It wasn't until I changed that my mom could start to show up differently in my life. And that was magic to me. And that was probably, I bet that was probably four years ago now. And well, five years ago, it was 2017. And I remember thinking, I don't want to have any regrets. You know, my mom had had a heart attack that year. And I didn't want to have any regrets. If something happened to her, I wanted to improve my relationship. So instead of me going out there to try to tell her to do things differently, I decided I'm going to do something different and I'm going to do something different that I've never done in 25 years of trying to mend my relationship with my mom. So it wasn't until I began to change that now my mom can show up differently. So what thoughts, beliefs, and actions do I want to change? How do I want to show up? How do I want to be? And then what situations do I want to change? Oh, when they say this or do this, or I want to go out more and I want to, I want to have more physical um, uh, 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 interludes with them, if that's the right word. I want to have more uh, intimacy. I want to have more friendship. I want to have more fun, whatever that is. And then really the biggest question is, who do I want to become? 
Who do I want to become? That becomes your clear intention. And in your clear intention, this is where now during the meditation, you have this clear purpose, this clear intention, that now this is now about you getting into the meditation, knowing what you're going to create. So you're going to create a different version of you. This is like the avatar state that I've talked about in the last several episodes is my goal is to use my mind to overcome my body. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to overcome my body and I'm going to have my body sit down for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is. And I'm going to get my mind to think about this new version of me that becomes the big goal. This is now the rehearsal state. I'm going to rehearse in my mind how I want to act. What words do I want to use? Who do I want to become? What are my words? What are my thoughts? What are my beliefs? And in that creative state, I don't have to think about when I get into my meditation what I'm going to do or, or, or what I'm going to think about. It really is, I've already done that. I already set the intention pre-meditation. I set the clear intention of who I want to become because I want to attract this newer version of my reality. So then in the meditation is this rehearsal is now in the meditation, I am rehearsing the actions, the beliefs, the thoughts, the behaviors. That's where you're the avatar in this movie in your mind, and you're creating this new version. So when when your husband comes home and he says this thing and he's like, oh, where's dinner? And then you get all pissed off because he says, where's dinner? Is now you're going to rehearse differently about what it is you're going to say and how you're going to respond. So in that moment during your meditation, when all the resistance is down and you're in this nice sleepy state, is you're going to show up differently in that moment. You're going to practice. You're going to rehearse. You're going to rehearse the new version of you. You're going to say different words. You're going to release the stuck energy around why it is he says that. And here's the magic. Let me just do a little, I'll do a little interception, a little um, interruption here. Sorry. I'll do a little interruption here that is, here's what's going to happen. And, and believe this to be true because I have seen it over and over again in my work is then your husband comes home that day and he goes, hey, honey, let me help with dinner. Like, don't be surprised. I have seen it over and over and over and over again when I've done all kinds of coaching with all kinds of clients that is like, you're not going to believe what happened. I get messages all the time. And I love it because then it builds this confidence. Like I talked about yesterday in the yesterday's podcast, how to easily create change is it builds this level of confidence that what you're doing is working, that what you're doing is the work. This is the work. This is, <laughs> that's what I just love so much about this is like, this is a thing to learn. Not all the stuff out there, but it's all the stuff in here. When I wanted that new relationship, I had to become a person worthy of having a great relationship. And eventually I did because guess what? I have a great relationship. So it worked. What I did worked. And what you're going to do now is going to work. Having that clear intention. Then in the meditation, you're going to rehearse. You're going to step into this actor role, if you will, and practice being that person, stepping fully into that role of being the person that you want to be. So the goal, the main goal in meditation, if I haven't mentioned it uh, yet, is to settle the mind, settle the body, but it's op- overcoming the body. The body wants to get up and engage with the five senses. The body is locked into the habit of get up, I, I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I make coffee, I make breakfast, and I do the thing, I check my phone, I check my email, and whatever. That's all the habit of the body. And our mind now is going to be basically the captain of the ship and go, hey, body, nope, we're just going to set anchor right here. You'll get all that in a minute. But I, body, I, I'm sorry, I, mind, I'm in control for this meditation and I'm going to instill something different. So that is part of the goal. So getting the mind conscious, waking up, being aware, setting your clear intention, setting the body down in this comfortable position, and then it's overcoming. The body's like, I want to get up, or I remember this thing. Don't do it. Just don't do it. And that becomes this internal rehearsal. Don't do it, okay? But then the next is about opening the heart. This is the portal to creation, is when the mind can can settle down the body and the body acquiesces, the body just relaxes and goes, okay, you're in charge. You mind, you're in charge. And then the heart opens. When the heart opens, that is like the line between you and the universe opened up. 
It is a beautiful thing. So if you haven't experienced it yet, please do. Please practice because it is so amazing the way it feels. It feels like a portal. It feels like the heart of Iron Man when he lights that thing up. That that is it blue? That that gem that's in the center of his chest like powers his suit that is like it is so amazing. That's what it feels like to me. So when I connect to my intuition, when I have a really good meditation, when I'm in the middle of manifesting and I know when my heart opens, boom, there it is. And now I just get to sit back and watch it unfold. If you haven't felt that, please please practice. Please set these goals, write this stuff down. Then in your in your meditation, you are acting out the scene. This is a rehearsal state. You're acting out the scene and it's a very clear visual scene to elevate the emotion that you want to feel. So now you're in the kitchen, you're making dinner, your husband comes home and he's like, you know, hey, you know, where's my dinner? You're going to act out something different and you can even you can even have him play a different role. Like I remember when I'm, you know, mending my relationship with my mom, is I'm going to call her on the phone and she's going to ask me about my kids. She's going to ask me about Amy. And she does now. She sends birthday birthday cards to the boys. She sends a birthday card to Amy. She asks how she is how she's doing at work. She asks how the boys are doing in school. Listen, for the first probably 6 years of our relationship, she didn't even acknowledge that the kids existed. She didn't even ask up not only ask about them, she didn't ask about Amy. So, it was kind of heartbreaking. You know, even though I talked to her often and she met Amy and acted like she liked she met the kids and acted like she liked them, but she never would ask about them. And and I wanted to change that. And I did. I visualized something different. And now there's a completely different version of my mom on the other side because of the work that I did. And I told you, I sent a, I sent an email to her. This was probably like right, let's say it happened in January of 2017. And then I would say probably by April, May or June, something like that, I sent her a card and I said, oh, I just love our relationship is so great. And I just love how how great it is. And she goes and she writes back and she goes, I didn't know our relationship wasn't great. Like she didn't know it was like an alternate universe. It was awesome. It was really awesome. And then, so now that's during the meditation, right? Okay. So if meditation just moves to some normal daily ritual, if you don't have an intention, if you don't have clear elevated emotions during your meditation, you're mostly just sitting there quietly. Like it's great to refuel the body in that way, but that's not a meditation. So sitting there doing nothing with no intention, no clear elevation, no visualization, you're not creating what it is that you're wanting. You And sometimes you might just be like, you know what, I need a mental break. Well, that can be your intention. But if you're like, okay, Jen says to just sit for five minutes, five times a day for five days in a row, and I'm going to see some major changes. Well, you will definitely see a calmer state of mind for 100%. For 100%, I totally get that. And I totally believe in that. But when you're ready to create real transformation, real change in your life, and you're wanting things to change outside of you, you're going to have to do it this way with this clear intention and an elevated emotion. When you elevate the emotion, you're getting the heart involved. If the body is is too busy, the mind is too busy, the mind does not control the body, your heart's not going to open. So that might be where you're at. And that's okay. Ask me if it's worth it. A thousand percent thousand percent worth it thousand so it's really important then to begin this practice wherever you are no matter where you are i remember uh we do these expos in kalamazoo we sell our meditation products and and stuff like that and books and i do energy healings and i you know i'm on stage and so i'm on stage and i do this you know it's like a 30 minute talk though i'm a keynote in march which I'm excited about. And uh, so I do this talk and I talk to this lady and we're talking about healing. And then she comes to the booth and and uh, I do an energy healing with her. And she goes, she goes, I realize that meditation is really important. She goes, and I want to heal my body, but I, I tried it once and it didn't work. I said, okay, so now let's talk about practice. <laughs> that puts me right into this next state. That meditation, like learning an instrument or practicing a sport or some skill that you need for work, you practice more than once. You don't go out and shoot one basket and miss and go, oh, well, I tried to play basketball. It didn't work for me. Why do we do that with meditation? Why do we do that with something so important that can completely change your life, heal your body, transform your entire experience? Why do we practice once, claim it didn't work, and then don't pick it up again? How many times have you been practicing your body into distraction or overwhelm 
or anxiety. We have to understand that our beliefs create our existence. So when we sit to practice, knowing these different parts of meditation is so amazing because it really breaks it down in a way that allows us to truly understand it. To go, oh, okay, so there's different parts of thinking. There's the thinking mind, like I'm talking to you right now. Then there's the body that holds the past and protects us and keeps us safe. And then there's the, there's your intuition. So there's all these different pieces that we get communication from that m- helps us to navigate this, this existence that we call life. But yet we don't practice. We just get into this autopilot, think that that's life. We start to wake up here and there and going, you know, I want something different. Like I hate this job. I've been here for 30 years. I haven't gotten a raise. I hate my... I hate my managers, I hate my, my coworkers, and I don't have my parking spot, and I've been doing this for forever, and I'm not happy anymore, and I want change. But then you don't know what to do, right? And you try to do something outside of you that doesn't change the, it doesn't change the reflection. It's the same thing. Because if you keep showing up as the same person, you're going to keep getting the same results. You're reading the same script. If I give my husband the script that says, hey, baby, what's for dinner? And it pisses me off, but I keep giving him that script because I'm not doing the work and I'm not clearing the energy or changing my beliefs or changing my behavior. He can't show up any differently. So until I go inward and I practice and I rehearse and I do this inner work and I release and I change those beliefs and I let those things go. Now, guess what? The next time I see my husband, he walks in the door, he's going to say something like, hey, why don't we go out to eat tonight? Or can I help you with dinner? right? And he turns the music on and you dance in the kitchen together and you make dinner like you used to when you were in college and it changes that quick. And you ask me how I know, because it happens. (laughs) It not only happens to me, it happens to my clients. It happens to everybody I talk about this with because they go and practice it. I want you to practice too. I want you to, to understand that we have been practicing this, my body's in charge, I get up, I check my phone, I check my email, I engage with my environment, it sets, it sets the mood for the day about who's posting what on social media, what somebody did, what my kid did, what my, co- my dog did, what my cat did, and what my schedule is for today, and that sets my mood for the day. Well, I'm telling you to be intentional. Let's do it. Let's rock it out. We're going to practice a sport. We go out there for a long period of time. You might go, you might go to the gym, you want to lose weight, you want to you know, add some muscle, you want to look lean and mean. You go to the gym once and you come home and you look in the mirror and you're like, oh man, nothing changed. I go, yeah. How long were you there? Oh, I was there for 10 minutes. I did a couple of bicep curls and I did some lat pull downs. I did some triceps and I go, okay, well, how long were you there? 10 minutes. I want you to go to the gym tomorrow and I want you to stay for 12 minutes. Then I want you to go to the gym the next day and I want you to do the treadmill and I want you to stay for 20 minutes. And then I want you to go the next day and I want you to stay for an hour and I want you to swim this time. You're going to practice moving your body and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to lengthen the amount of time that you're there. That's practice. When Cameron first started playing baseball, he would only go out and, you know, for 20 minutes. And I'm just like, okay, we're still pitching. He goes, yeah, my shoulders hurt. I don't want to play anymore. I'm like, okay. So we go inside, you know, keep doing that. Five days, five days a week, right? Go out, practice, pitch, 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 throw, 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 bat, 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 right? Then the next week, he's like, okay, I can stay out longer. It's 45 minutes. We're staying. Now we're going over to the park and we're there for an hour. Then we go to the park. We're there for two hours and we're practicing all these things around because baseball diamonds over there. So we're practicing running the bases and catching the grounders and fielding and pop-ups and we're batting and we're pitching and we're catching and we're doing all this stuff. And he's there longer, 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 longer. And guess what? He's getting good at it. Matter of fact, he's really good at baseball. He plays the drums. He's got like a 13-piece set downstairs. And what does he do? He practiced for 10 minutes. It's not that good. He can't come up and go, well, I thought I was going to be, you know, like Dave Grohl on the drums, but I totally suck. It's not that good. Well, go practice again. Go do it tomorrow. You know, gain more knowledge. Practice, practice, practice. That's how I want you to think about this. This is your life. This is your life. This is your life experience. This is a 3D world and we have to become good at living this life because what it is that you're doing if you're struggling, you're just not doing it right. You're just not, you're not living life by the rules that are right here in front of you. Meditation is sweeping the nation. Everybody's talking about it. When they used to talk about it, you know, when, when I was in my 20s, I'm just like, yeah, that's for like Buddhist monks who live in Tibet. Like I can't even get into Tibet now. It's like a closed country. And I, you want me to do what now? Sit and do what? What do I do? And it wasn't until it kept coming around coming around, coming around, getting in front of me and going, yeah, you got to meditate. Oh, you need a spiritual practice. Oh, you got to meditate. And I'm like, I don't have any idea what to do. 
Well, here's me telling you what to do. So when you're going to take up a sport, an instrument, a skill that you're going to use at work, what do we do? We practice, we rehearse, we step into it. Oh yeah, okay, there's five seconds left on the clock. Jen Max up for a free throw. She just got a foul in the last one. You should have seen it. She makes this one. She's going to get another one. Here we go. And she dribbles the ball. She's got her fingertips on it. She's ready. She shoots. She scores. That's me practicing. That's me rehearsing my life. This, my friends, is when life gets really, really exciting. But it doesn't get exciting if you don't get off the bleachers and into the game. It doesn't get exciting if you don't get off the bleachers and get your, get your, your, um, your equipment and practice. Practice getting your mind to be in charge of your body, getting your body to relax, getting your heart to open and being clear about what it is that you want. I think meditation can change your life. And I know because it changed mine. It created this relationship. It, it gave me a family. It, it mended my relationship with my mom. I'm able to manifest all kinds of things. And I want the same thing for you. Now, I'm going to put at the end the, the outro about a discovery call. And I am opening my coaching up to, I think, like two more people. If this is something that you want practice in, if this is something that you want a customizable mentor in your, I'm not customizable, <laughs> but the, the, the conversation would be customizable. If you want one-on-one, if you're moved, please reach out to me. You'll have the information in the show notes and on the outro. So after this, get your notes, go practice, set your intention and open your heart. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room tc at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.